So another pre-stress loss that we will study on this discussion is what we call creep loss. So creep loss is actually another time-dependent uh, cause or source of pre-stress loss, just like still relaxation, which both which are both dependent on time, meaning their magnitudes differ or change as time changes. So creep loss is actually a product of uh, what we call creep or lateral material flow, lateral material flow or deformation due to the longitudinal, longitudinal stress, which is actually the increase in strain with time due to a sustained load. So that, that is actually the ma main reason why creep happens because of what we call sustained load that are, are I mean, uh, that is being carried by the concrete. So usually creep occurs after some time after the concrete already attained its uh, its strength and after the concrete already supports the what we call sustained loads which are the superimposed dead loads and live loads or even part, even part of the live loads. So creep occurs when the concrete already supports those uh, sustain what we call sustained loads. And because of that, because of the occurrence of grip on the concrete element, uh, grip loss, which is actually a loss on pre-stressing force, is being experienced by the pre-stressing reinforcement. So the stress-strain relationship due to grip is essentially linear, therefore, it is feasible to relate the creep strain to the elastic strain, thereby producing what, what is called creep coefficient Cu. So if you can remember on our previous discussion, especially on the elastic shortening of concrete, as the pre-stress force is transferred to the concrete element, a, a strain is being experienced by the concrete element, which is actually what we call elastic strain. And then again, after some time, after the concrete already attained uh, its uh, its strength, and after it already supports the superimposed dead loads and live loads, a additional or an additional strain uh, is being experienced by the concrete due to those sustained loads that it supports, which is actually called the creep strain. And again, that creep strain or that creep is actually the cause of what we call the creep loss, which is again the loss of pre-stress being experienced by the pre-stressing reinforcement. So if we will try to find the ratio of the elastic shortening and the, uh, I mean, elastic strain and the creep strain, if we will try to find the ratio of the elastic strain and the creep strain, we will get a if a coefficient, which is what, what we call a creep coefficient Cu. So in equation form, Cu is just equal to creep strain over elastic strain. Although, if we want, since, uh, since we know that creep is dependent with time, if we want to find the actual magnitude of the uh, creep coefficient that we can use for finding the creep loss, uh, in terms of t days, or in terms of time, which is in terms of days, we can use this formula. So the creep coefficient, which is dependent on time, is actually equal to the creep coefficient we have here, which is the ratio of the uh, which the ratio of the creep strain and the elastic strain multiplied by t to t to the 0 0.6 all over 10 plus t to the 0 0.6. So with that, the loss in free stress members due to creep for banded members is equal to this formula. So this is the this is how you can compute for the magnitude of free stress loss due to creep. You just have to multiply the creep coefficient with the with the corresponding uh, factor for uh, for uh, counting of time multiplied by the what we call modular ratio which is the ratio of the modulus of elasticity of the pre-stressing reinforcement and the concrete itself 
multiplied by the concrete uh, stress acting on the level of the pre-stressing reinforcement. So that is one way to compute the uh, pre-stress loss due to creep. So there is another way to compute the pre-stress loss due to creep, which uh, which is uh, enumerated or specified on ACI 423.10 which is the guide to estimating pre-stress loss reported by Joint ACI AAC Committee 423. And the, the corresponding formula is actually found on Section 5.2, CRIP coefficient. And these are the corresponding provisions you can find on 5.2.1 to find the corresponding pre-stress loss due to CRIP 4 bonded tendons and this is for unbonded tendons coming from section 5.2.2 so the most important parts of this provisions you see here it are are this and this and this so again this is the whole provision for finding the pre-stress loss due to creep for bonded tendons and this is for unbonded tendons but you just have to you just have to uh, keep in mind that if we are talking about uh, pre-stress members made of sand lightweight concrete uh, there must be a 20% reduction of the uh, creep coefficient that we will use which is the K here the KCR that you see here if the concrete is uh, lightweight concrete but if not you can uh, proceed with using the formulas you see here so again to account for uh, the effect of sand lightweight concrete you have to reduce the magnitude of the creep coefficient you see here the KCR before you continue on computing for the pre-stress loss due to so if we will try to investigate what is the formula for bonded tendons for finding the pre-stress loss due to creep, it is composed of the product of the creep coefficient KCR and the modular ratio, the ratio of the modulus of elasticity of uh, pre-stressing reinforcement and the concrete, and the difference between FCIR and FCDS. FCIR stands for, uh, uh, I mean, FCI, FCIR is actually the net compressive concrete stress at center of gravity of pre-stressing pre force immediately after the pre-stress has been applied to the concrete. And then, FCDS is the concrete stress at center of gravity of pre-stressing pre uh, force due to all superimposed permanent dead loads that are applied to the member after it has been uh, pre-stressed. So actually, uh, I don't know if there, are, there is a typographical error here, but uh, uh, FCDS must be the compressive stress according to this according to this uh, definition here FCDS is uh, must be the must be the stress coming from all the superimposed permanent dead and sustained loads after pre-stressing so FCIR is the stress at transfer with self weight and FCDS is the stress on the level of the pre-stressing reinforcement uh, after the sustained loads are applied. So if you will try to use the formula given here, FCDS is equal to MSD times uh, negative, uh, I mean MSD times E sub P, the eccentricity of the pre-stressing reinforcement all over the moment of inertia of the concrete. So KCR is 2 for pretension normal weight components, 1.6 for pretension sand light weight components, 1.6 for post tension normal weight components, 
and 1.28 for post tension sun lightweight components. So for the case of unbanded tendons, you can use this formula. We just have changed the the stress here by FCPA, which is the average compressive concrete stress along the member length at the center of gravity of the <coughs> tendons immediately after the free stress has been applied to the concrete, or in other words, uh, the stress at transfer with self weight <coughs> along the member length of the center of gravity of the tendons. So actually, these these formulas are similar to this, but we similar to this uh, formula that we have here. Although these formulas actually came from the uh, uh, ACI dash ASCE Joint Committee. <coughs>